Arrested and I stood out and reminded him of those rapes of you and Ngozi. <laughs> oh my God! You should have seen the expression on, on his face. I mean, I mean, you should have seen this expression on his face. It was like, what is this all about? <laughs> what is this all about? For <laughs> God, for me, that was the height of the pleasure. GP, I'm a genius. Let's celebrate this. Let's, let's celebrate. God help him. I'll pray for him. I don't know what ill love that is following me. I have not stopped thinking about what I may have done for my auntie to have driven me out of the house without a call. Was it because of the broken ticker? Uncle Chris promised her he would buy another one and she agreed. Immediately he left. She told me to pack my things. Just like that. that it is my mother's sister that lived with my mom and trained in school by my father that could do such a thing to me. Oh. It is a wicked world. And as I sat there in the park without money, I wondered where to go. And even if I had the money, I, I couldn't have gone back to my father because he is not happy with me. Oh. Stop crying. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. <laughs> Listen, because let me tell you. Listen to me. If the whole world rejects you, I will not reject you. When I saw you out there, I knew you were not the street type. My spirit, my spirit just went out for you. I told you that you will stay here for two days. Now you can stay for as long as you want. Hmm? If there's anything you want, once it's in my power to do it, just tell me and I'll do it for you. Hmm? It's okay. Thank you. It's okay. It's Thank you very much. God will bless you. Amen. Amen. He <laughs> will bless you too. You've thanked me enough, so stop thanking me. Hmm? It's okay. Let's go to bed.
come in. I hope there's no problem. No, there's no problem. I just need you to clear it down to my mind. Okay. Go ahead. Tell me. raped you. You were seriously devastated just like any woman would be. Due to the trauma you went through, your effort at getting back at him and where it landed you. I went to a great length to exact revenge and see that the man who did that to you is punished. But when I broke the news to you, you didn't look excited. Rather, you said, hey, 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 I, I will pray for him. <laughs> pray for Adams. It didn't make sense to me. It didn't make sense Tell to me. Tell me no. Tell me no. All that you said is true. I was traumatized. And I went for revenge. But did you see where it led me? When I was incarcerated, I wished above everything to get out of that place. And then I met someone who showed me not only how to get out of police custody, but how to get anything I want in life. I was shown who I am and my purpose in life. And then I looked inwards and discovered who I am. I am a child of God, created not to live according to my wills, but by the will of God. I don't understand. On my own, I went after Adam's revenge. But it was not the will of God. Because God says that vengeance is His. But when I acted on my own, the saw where my self-driven actions led me to a police cell. The experience was terrible, terrible. But I've learned to live according to God's command and will. And since then, I have had peace and harmony in all that I do. All I am saying is that with the Spirit of God in me now, I have lost the passion for revenge. I have nothing, absolutely nothing to gain from Adam's incarceration. I am disappointed in you. Look, what you're saying has given rise to a suspicion that has been nagging at my mind. And that is how you may have had a fear within what made us to believe you raped you. Tabuna, how can you say a thing like that? I had an affair with him, yet I bought a gun to kill him. Who knows? Who knows? Maybe the affair went south. But you know what? I was such a fool to think that you were hot and I took it off on me as your brother to revenge on your behalf. Such a fool. Such a mistake. Tamuno. Such a mistake. Tamuno. Take it easy with yourself, okay? Okay. Yeah. Uncle Chris, I was thinking, you know, I don't know why you people buy food from the eatery. Uh, well, maybe because Auntie Faye is always very busy. But if you give me money, I can go to the market, buy things, and cook here. It is cheaper, and you know it is better to cook at home. You mean you can cook? Of course. I am a woman. Every woman can cook. Oh, no. Not your auntie, Efe. She mm. can't. Anyway, um, that's a great idea. How much do you need? I'll need 5,000 naira so I can cook soup, make stew, buy gari and rice. Alright, okay. 
Okay, that. Okay. And please make sure you don't eat outside because you eat dinner here. Oh, I am already salivating. <laughs> okay. Bye bye. All right, bye. Take care. I am not offended by your utterance back in my room because I know that you do not understand. Let me understand. The path of life I have chosen is best for me. And in fact, I regret that my understanding of things is coming late. But I still thank God for opening my eyes. Because I'm sure you've had a good thought of this new year quiet believe your ways. I am not living my life for anyone, but for myself by doing the will of God. And from all that God has done for me, He has made me to understand that a life of anger, envy, vengeance, and every other act that is out of the boundary of love is not good for my health. And there are consequences. Do you understand? When you have anger, envy, and hate in your mind, it constrains the cells to shrink, leading to clogging up of your blood system. These results are high blood pressure and you know what that means. Hate brings about diseases. Now if you're lucky to survive the high blood pressure and the diseases, the results of your actions, like the experience that I had in prison might not be pleasant. So you say it is not foolishness or weakness, but a desire to live and to live abundantly and in good health. Love on the other hand flushes your blood system and enables you to live in good health. Tamanu, spiritually speaking, a life without hate and vengeance lifts up your spirit and it does not only bring you closer to God to hear and be led by Him, but it also enables you to live in peace and harmony. I do not expect you to understand all that I have said, but know this, I am living according to the will of God for my own good and my good manifests Him on earth. May God give you peace and understanding. Good night.
Where have you been? Nobody seems to know your whereabouts. I'm very sorry, sir. I was having a word with, with my sister. Your sister? Uh, this is my sister. Yes. <laughs> Your sister. That's good. And she's um she's pretty too. You know what? Take her to my office. I will um I'll be with you shortly. Mama, what is wrong with you? Why did you tell your boss that I'm your sister and not your girlfriend? Do you want me to get sacked, Mildred? Is that what you want? The boss will have more sympathy if I said I was here with a, a sister than if I said I was here with a girlfriend. Oh, really? And I hope you know what you're doing. Because I saw the way he was looking at me. How? I saw sheer lust in his eyes. You're not getting the point. Today any man will not look at you lustfully, my lovely Mildred. It means there's something wrong with you. <laughs> and you need to see an oracle. Wait for me. Be nice to me. I do not want to lose my job. And don't forget, we need this money. Just sit down, sit down. You know, you just need to be patient. You just need to be calm. Because... Sir. You say she's your sister, Boma? Yes, sir. Her name is Mildred. Mildred. Come, Mildred. What a beautiful name for a beautiful girl. <laughs> Millie, Millie, you look beautiful this day of our Lord. Boma, I don't like what is going on. Your boss is taking this thing too far. Mildred, that man is our meal ticket. If I lose my job in his office, it's back to hunger days for us. I just need to stick with him for a while. And he'll show me how to make big money. Just be patient, please. Maybe you don't understand what I'm trying to say. That man is already forcefully sleeping with me. And I don't like it. I don't like his violent attitude. If that does not move you to tell him the truth, hear this. He has proposed to me. And he's thinking of next month. Mildred, marriage, this is going too far, but let us remember it's only just for a while. I know him, this passion will blow away in no distant time, and by that time we would have gotten all the money and we get out. You must be dreaming, Boma. I've come to know Adams more than you. That man is a rough rider and I don't like his attitude for one bit. If anything happens to me, my spirit will not let you be. It's like mortgaging my freedom in his house, and I don't like it. You look lost at the say. 
you're still trying to make up your mind about your boss. So, what is bothering you? The whole thing. The whole thing bothers me. I mean, we have to tread carefully, Mildred, with whatever we are doing. We need to make sure that this does not rebound back on us, because if it does, Adams will come after us. Look, you may know him as your husband, but you do not know him as a shrewd businessman that destroys anything on his way. If we help the drug agency name him, he will go down and serve a long term in jail. By the time he comes out, we are far gone. You do not know the organization. Betray one of them. One of them. And no matter how long it takes, the rest will help him track you down. Hello? Boma, time is running out. We must get going. I told you I will call you once I have made contact with the lawyer. That was yesterday. If you did not do it all yesterday, then we don't need to wait. We go there and see the man. Do you think I'm sitting here doing nothing? I don't know what you're doing sitting down there. All I know is that you don't do much sitting down in one place. Come on, man. Let's get going. There are places we need to go now. Okay. I'll be down in a moment. Baby, I have to go. Go where? Go rescue that man? You must be joking. Look, if I keep quiet, if I seem to do something, it will look suspicious that you and I gave away Adams. Look, we will be dead before you can think of running away. Let me go with Rizzo. I'll let him suggest whatever he wants to do. I'll simply tag along so that we will be safe should Adams get released. Well, I don't like it. But if you feel like tagging along with Rizzo is the best thing, fine. But let me tell you something. I will not put up to that animal again. Instead, I'll kill myself. What is it that you have been discussing with your sister since yesterday that has not finished it today? You do know you're talking about a woman whose husband has been incarcerated. What else do you think I'll be talking with her for? Mm. Thinking of her attitude yesterday at the agency, I can bet that whatsoever she's saying about the boss is not in its favor. And I'm worried that you're spending time listening to her instead of being on your toes to see to the release of the boss. What? Are you talking to me like that, Rizzo? Shall we go? Do you, are you talking to me like that? Do you know that I'm your superior and you take all this from me? Superior. Shall we go? Hello, Shade. Please, can you come over? I need to talk to you. I am so confused. Shade, I am finished. Please hurry. I'll be waiting. Thank you.
Ada. Yes, mommy. Are you going out? How can you be going out when your house is on fire? Oh, my house is on fire. Mommy, please, I don't understand what you mean. Ah, uh -uh. were you not there when Ife called yesterday to say that Ungozi was on her way to Lagos? Mm -hmm. Since then, she has not arrived. Are you not worried that something could have happened to her? Or what do you think your father would say or do if anything should happen to her? Mommy, of course I am worried. But I am worried for a different reason. Nothing will happen to Ngozi, so stop worrying yourself about what daddy will say. Rather, worry yourself about the implication of her coming back. Yes. <laughs> I heard Ngozi's name yes. mentioned. Any news about her? Uh, no, daddy, not like there's news of her, but... I was just, um, I was only telling mommy about a friend of hers that she usually talks about. So I want to go and check on her to see if she has any news about Ngozi. Okay. Yes, Please go and come back quick. Yes, Daddy. I will be waiting. Okay. Thank you, Daddy. Are you seeing? Mommy, I am saying you should be concerned about the consequences about her coming back home. What consequences? Mommy! Mommy, think! Think! Didn't I tell you that Ngozi told me that she lost the pregnancy? Eh? That means she's no longer pregnant. Mm -hmm. She's as new as the sweet, innocent, loving Ngozi that's attracted by you. <laughs> Mommy, if she comes back, and by your force for her in preference of me. You are not the losers. Ngozi will not do anything for you married to Bayo. And you will go back to the village with daddy. God forbid. But if she stays away, Bayo will have no option but to marry me. And if he marries me, you will move into his house with me. So mommy, when next you're worrying, know exactly what you're worrying about. Bye. What is the matter? Thanks for coming. You sounded worried when you called me. Chris is gone. Chris is gone. He left because of my niece, Ngozi. Is that why you did not go to work? Calm down. Yeah. Calm down. Tell me everything. Huh? Maybe we should sit. Okay. Hey. Okay. What is it? According to your advice, uh -huh. I sent Ngozi back to Lagos. But Chris did not like it though. He said I am wicked, and just like that, he packed his things and left yesterday. Chris has not come back since then, no. He has not come back, oh. I'm sure he will be back, but we won't wait. Go and get dressed. Let's go to the hospital and say, when we say, you have a word with him, then you apologize, and everything will be okay. He will be back. Eh, yes. Let me go and get dressed immediately. Just calm down. Everything will be okay. Ah. Hey. Hello. Hello. Please, we're here to see Dr. Chris again now. Are you consulting on medical reason? No, it is unofficial. Is he expecting you? No. Then I'm afraid there's really... She is his fiancé. Oh, may I know your name, please? Effie. Please have a seat while I notify you. Thank you. Daddy, I'm here. Adesu, 
I have a question for you. And for record purposes, did Ngozi tell you she was pregnant before she left? Mm. Hey, hey, wait, wait, wait. I want you to think carefully before you answer that question. Because if in the end you knew anything about it, you will see the other side of me. Now, did you know anything about it? Well, um, in actual facts, she mentioned something like that. Okay. Hey, but before I could ask her to talk about the details, she had gone. Oh, she told you she was pregnant and you wanted to get the details. Details of what? No. Uh, uh, see, uh, when she was talking to me, I was not attentive because I was cooking. All right. And after cooking? I forgot. You forgot? What kind of a mother are you at this one? Your daughter told you she is pregnant. It meant little to you. That was why you could not stop whatever you were doing to listen to her. It meant little to you to remember to ask her later. It also meant nothing at all to you to mention it to me. Now because you have failed in your duty as a mother, you come here to pretend you are concerned. And that's why you have failed. But let me warn you. If anything happens to my daughter, you will not live in this house to tell the tale. Hey! Are you threatening me? No, I'm not threatening you. But I'm stating a fact. Yes. This life.